Welcome to Chapter 5 of the Book of Micah, The Coming Ruler. Very interesting chapter. I'll go through a little in the Greek, and then we'll go through the chapter. Nain emphrachthisate thigatir emphragamo. Sinohin etaxen ef imas en noravdo pataxusin episiagona tas filas to Israel. Now, the daughter, we have thigatir and daughter, it's a transliteration into uh, English. The daughter shall be obstructed obstructed by an obstruction. He ordered conflict for us. Now, the daughter, I believe, is probably talking about the daughter of Jerusalem, and the conflict is going to be ordered by God, and he does order conflict. It says it, for he ordered conflict for us. Today, we have Israel and the city of Gaza at war, and it's getting very bad. I don't want to go too much into it, uh, but here we'll see in this chapter, I think, a possibility of a portent of what is happening right now. So the, we see here that conflict is ordered uh, for us. Now, that doesn't mean that God is the one wanting that, but he is allowing that. And it continues, uh, they shall st strike by a rod upon the jaw the tribes of Israel, and they, I believe, would be either or all Assyria, which came down, took uh, the Jews from the northern kingdom, or Babylon, which will take the Jerusalem and people of the southern kingdom, and then later Rome when all the Jews come back from Babylonian captivity, and they'll be taken for 2,000 years. And so I believe this is possibly what he's talking about right here. And then he goes into this interesting quotation that is used in the New Testament uh, and uh, by the Magi. And it says, And you, Vithlaem, to Ikus, the house of Ephrathah, Oligostos, E, are very few, to Ine, in Heliasin, Iuda, being among the thousands of Judah. Exu, from you, me, exolevsete, to Ine, is Archonta, to Israel. Uh, from out of you, to me, shall come forth the one being for ruler of Israel. Now, where do we see that in the New Testament? Chapter 2 of uh, Matthew, yeah. And now Jesus, having been born in Bethlehem, which I just mentioned, of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, Magi from the east came into Jerusalem, saying, Where is the one having been born king of the Jews? For we beheld his star in the east, and we came to do obeisance to him. Now, were they in the east or the star in the east? Questionable, probably they were in the east and they saw his star there. Uh, when hearing Herod, the king was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. And gathering together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ is born. And they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are not at all least in the governs of Judah. Judah, For from out of you will come forth one leading, who will tend my people Israel. So this is the promise of God that his son would be born in Bethlehem. I believe 
that when the man of sin comes, proclaims himself as God in the temple, that he may very well have credentials of having been born in Bethlehem himself. Because the Jews know that this Messiah that's coming has to be born in Bethlehem. Now it's Bethlehem now is in the West Bank under Palestinian control, but with, with all the things that are going on now, who knows how long the Palestinians uh, will be in control of that area. They may uh, be a, extricated by the Jews also. Now, the words here that are interesting t to me, uh, the first one is, who is born in Bethlehem? And it says in Revelation 1.5, and the ruler, it says, it, uh, shall come forth for being ruler. Uh, and Revelation 1.5, and from Jesus Christ, the trustworthy witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. Now, he's not the ruler of the kings of the earth right now. We don't see him on earth, but he will, will be. Uh, I did a little study on rulers. I thought it was interesting once I got into this, um, Jesus being the ruler. Uh, rulers are mentioned, and I'm going through the New Testament only, uh, they're mentioned uh, in Matthew 9, 18. We have a ruler whose daughter died and Jesus raised from the dead. Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue, Luke 8, 41. And Nicodemus in John 3, 1 was a Pharisee and a ruler of the Jews, it says. Now, it also mentions rulers of the Jews in general and says in uh, Luke 14, one into the house of the Pharisees, Jesus went where the rulers were. Then in Luke 18, 18, a rich ruler questions Jesus about uh, what he needs to do to be delivered. And Luke 23, 13, Pilate uh, and the rulers were called at the crucifixion time. And the rulers decided, derided Jesus when he was on the cross, the rulers of the Jews. In Luke 23, 35, uh, the pilot on uh, the rulers was Luke 23, 13. And then the people question if the rulers knew who, that Jesus was the Christ. And John 7, 26 and 48. It says in John 12, 42, that many of the rulers believed in Jesus uh, against what the Pharisees wanted, but they were afraid uh, of mentioning it to get uh, cast, kicked out of the synagogue, so they didn't. Then rulers are mentioned uh, in general in many places. You can do a word study on that. And then P it says in Acts 4, 8, Peter addressed the rulers about the resurrection of Jesus. Acts 23, 5 talks about Paul. It says, and Paul said, uh, I know now, brothers, that he is chief priest, for it has been written, you shall not speak ill of a ruler of your people. And this was when uh, Paul was taken captive by the Romans and the, well, the people wanted to kill him when he went into the temple. And he was extricated by the Romans. And um, he was giving his defense in the, um, uh, where, the, the, where they gathered. And this is what he said. There are rulers of nations. It says they will uh, dominate in Matthew 20, 25, in making war, Luke 12, 58. Then Acts 4, 26, it says, the kings of the earth and the rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. This was Peter and John before the Sanhedrin telling them. Now, the kings uh, they gathered against the Lord. Now, going back to this uh, war between the uh, the president of Israel didn't say against any certain people. He said the enemy uh, in the p speech I heard anyway. Uh, and the enemy uh, to the Jews is Christians and Muslims. And the enemy of the Muslims are the Christians and the Jews. Now, not everybody, of course, but on the whole, the rulers. 
And as I mentioned a uh, chapter or so back, the rulers are what make the decisions that a country follows, whether the people like it or not. And so God, though, uh, knows what's going on and is allowing things to happen. And then it mentions in Acts 14.5 uh, that the ruler of the city of Iconium wanted to stone Paul and Barnabas. In Romans 13.3, it says, For the rulers are not a fear of the ones uh, of good works, so not to fe be fearful. And then in 1 Corinthians 2, 6 to 8, uh, it mentions rulers of this eon don't know what they are doing, and they still don't, fighting uh, with one another and hating the things of Christ. And finally, the ruler of this world. We find out who he is in uh, John 12, 31. Jesus says, now is judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world shall be cast outside. So the ruler of the world is Satan, and God has allowed him to be this ruler. Jesus didn't argue with him. And written John 14, 30, Jesus says, No longer will I speak many things with you for the one of the world, the ruler. And with me, he has not one thing. And so this, the ruler of the world is a powerful being. And I'm sure he is in charge of this war between Islam and the Jews. John 16, 11, it says about him, uh, and Jesus says, and concerning judgment, for the ruler of this world has been judged. Satan knows that he's going into the lake of fire. The people, uh, Pharisees and others, in Matthew 3.22 and Luke 11.15, said that Jesus was a Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. In Ephesians 2.2, 2, it says, In which at one time you walked according to the eon of this world, people or Christians and before, according to to the ruler of the authority of the air, of the spirit now operating in the sons of disobedience. So Satan rules, he wants to kill and destroy, Jesus tells us, and right now it's coming together to what I have mentioned many times in the second chapter of the Thessalonians, that I see Israel doing something terrible. I've thought this for many years. Uh, something really so bad against the Muslims that they're all going to say, well, we got to get rid of the, uh, Israel because they're proving that our God is not the true God, because if we can't get rid of this little country, so they attack and they get defeated. So would that be, that'll probably be the end of Islam, pretty much. And then Israel and the, then the, I believe the man of sin will be involved in that and he will proclaim himself as God. And when that happens, and it says uh, in Second Thessalonians 2, uh, that there'll be the gathering of us. And so uh, this, I believe, is what's happening now. And uh, it says, and his exitings, that's in 5.2, were from the beginning, the archies from eon of days. And Jesus uh, is still talking about here. And it says, uh, in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, archi, the same word here, uh, archi. Uh, and the word was uh, with God, pros is the word, and that means meta is generally with, but it used pros, which is a strange structure to me. Pros is almost like together, uh, something that's together, not just with them, you're walking with them, but you're there. And this is what it means. And the word was God. This one was in the beginning, pros, theon, with God. Uh, Jesus was with God, the beginning. And his exodings were from the beginning in the days of the eon. And it says that there in John 1.1. 1, 1. His exodings, what is that all about? Luke 9.31. The ones appearing in glory spoke of his departure, his exodus, which he was about 
to fulfill in Jerusalem when he went up to heaven. Uh, and this is on the Mount of Transfiguration, where he appeared with Moses and Elijah. Continues in three, on account of this, he will appoint them uh, unto a time of giving birth. And it, the time of it's going to happen is going to be like Israel when it first became a nation, more or less. And she shall give birth, and the rest of the ones of their brothers shall return upon or unto the sons of Israel. <laughs> now, this could be referring to the Christian Jews who became Christians. The ones of their brothers shall return uh, unto the sons of Israel. In verse 4, <clears throat> And he shall stand and tend in strength of the Lord. And that is Jesus. 5.4 says tending, Revelation 2.27, And he, Jesus, shall tend them with a rod of iron. There it is. And the strength of the Lord, in 2 Thessalonians 1.9, it says, Who with punishment shall pay eternal ruin from the face of the Lord and from the glory of his strength. So the glory of his strength. And then, and in the glory of the name of the Lord, their God, they shall exist. And what name is that? Jesus. He says that in many places. For now he shall be magnified unto the uttermost parts of the earth, and Jesus is. Now it changes uh, in 5 and 6. Uh, it says, And this shall be the peace whenever the Assyrian should come upon our land. Uh, the Assyrian empire today is the Muslims, basically. Assyria was up uh, where uh, the northern part of Iraq, all Muslim. So they're going to, Israel is going to be at peace, and then the Assyrians, the Muslims, will come upon our land. And whenever uh, he should mount upon our place, and there shall be roused up against him seven shepherds and eight strikes of men. I believe that's a future event. We don't know, but we'll see uh, these uh, seven shepherds, who they are, and eight strikes of men against, I believe, the Muslims. And they shall tend to Syria, the Muslims, by a broadsword and the land of Nimrod, Iraq, at her trench. And he shall rescue from Assyria whenever it should come upon your land and whenever it should mount upon your borders. So I believe that after the Israel maybe will wipe Gaza off the face of the map, all the Muslims are going to be mad. They're already mad, and it hasn't even happened yet. And then they'll come against Israel. My, that's my take. <laughs> and then it goes into the vestige. And the vestige of Jacob will be in the midst of many peoples, as do from the Lord uh, falling, something good, and as lambs upon wild grass eating, so that it should be gathered to no one nor should stand among the sons of men. Now, if it's talking about the Jews before they came to Israel or a future time, I'm not really sure. <laughs> and the vestige of Jacob will be among the nations in the midst of many peoples. Well, they are, really. All the Jews are scattered throughout the world. Uh, as a lion among cattle in the forest, they can cause, the Jews can cause a lot of problems. And as a cub among the flocks of sheep, eh, still causing problems, in which manner, whenever he should go through and draw apart to seize his prey by force, a lion or bear, and there should be none rescuing. So when these happen, Israel will attack, the, I believe, the Muslims. Now, this is just my opinion. Uh, take it for what it is. I've been studying the Bible for many years and translated the Old and New Testament, so I think the credentials are fairly good. But the Bible said that the uh, men of the time before Jesus came were looking, and they didn't. They missed the suffering Messiah. Well, if they could miss that, I could miss a lot of things too. But uh, I'm giving you my opinion of what I see here. 
and then in nine, your hand shall be raised up high upon the ones afflicting you, and all your enemies shall utterly be utterly destroyed. And now it changes into a strange little uh, ending, and it says, and it will be in that day, in what day? I believe this is going to be in the time of Ezekiel, chapter 40 to 48, on Mount Moron, and after the tribulation. Uh, I will utterly destroy your houses from out of your midst, and I will destroy your chariots, uh, and I will utterly destroy the cities of your land, and I will remove all your fortresses. It's not, Israel is not going to be a strong military might. And I will utterly destroy your potions from out of your hands. And that's pharmaca. Pharmacology comes from that. You can add that to your English derivatives book. And one's declaring fortunes shall not be to you. It's going to be a time of cleanse, cleansing of Israel. And I will utterly destroy your carved images, any idols, and your monuments from out of your midst. And no longer should you do obeisance to the works of your hands and the idols. And I will cut your sacred groves from out of your midst, and I will obliterate, obliterate your cities. Now, this could be the time between um, Nebuchadnezzar and Jesus, where uh, idolatry pretty well ceased. And I will execute in anger and in rage vengeance among the nations, because they listened not. Now, I don't see any of the nations, um, except for maybe the Muslims, uh, will see the vengeance that God has um, coming, because they listened not. Interesting chapter, isn't it? Chapter 6, The Judgment of the Lord. And we'll find out about that in the next video seminar. I hope you join us. Till then, God bless.